Hello students. So for my final for my Pilates class, I will be I will basically be demonstrating a lot of the moves I've learned in this class, pretending I'm my instructor and I will basically pretend like I'm teaching a class virtually and somebody is and basically someone's watching this video and trying to do my workout with me giving them instructions and trying to motivate you. Now before we go into the video, there's something you should know about me as your trainer as well as this video is geared to anyone, to everyone pretty much, people who have never done Pilates before, people who have never worked out, and people who have disabilities physically like my, like me, and have poor coordination, hand-eye coordination, leg movement coordination, and so forth. Just letting you know that, just putting that out there, because I have a disability myself, it's cerebral policy, it's very minor, but I've had many leg surgeries to walk, and I've had to, but ha taking Pilates has improved my coordination, with my leg movements as well as my leg movements in general that's never happened before because before i took this class i was just doing walking and i was doing yoga but this class has really pushed me to my limits and improved me in a tremendous amount of ways so before we go into that i just want to say that like in if you for myself i've had my hamstrings have been for my past leg operations i've had um, surgeries on every part of my leg possible and one of them in the last surgery was my hamstrings have basically been cut I don't have a full hamstring muscle on either one of my legs. I only have the top part of the muscle, but anything below the top part of the hamstring muscle has basically been chopped off, gone forever. Same with both legs. So that's why if we, when we do this exercise, you notice I can't lift my legs all the way high in certain poses, but it's getting there. It's improvement. That's the beauty about this class. It's improved my overall movements with my legs and my coordination. So, But still, it's a bit of a challenge. There's some... So when we do bridges, like what I'm going to show you guys here today, you guys can come up on your toes and come back up. I can't do that because I don't have my full hamstrings attack intact. The other thing is, I'm, I'm wearing, as you notice in this video, I'll be wearing boots, my shoes, so because I can't, because my feet were also operated on, they're a bit deformed. So when I, if I try doing them with my socks on even, I can't be bare feet in general because I have an uneven leg on. Each One leg is shorter than the other. And if I try bending my toes, I have to really focus and concentrate to bend my toes to do like a push-up with my toes bent because otherwise my toes can't bend unless I really concentrate and it's hard. But the shoes do it for me, so I'm always, I always have to wear shoes. So I'm just putting that out there so as I'm teaching you guys, you understand, as well as this video relates to anyone who wants to try Pilates but has a disability and has these different, has limitations and think they can do it. I'm here to just say from my experience taking this course this semester, that's not true. You can try, give it a try. I thought the same thing, but this class changed my perspective and helped me out in so many ways. So let's get started. We're going to warm up with the bridge, and then at some point, I might just play some music, or if not, we're just going to just, I'm just going to show you the movements. We're going to warm up, and then we're going to get started, okay? Let's adjust this camera. Okay. Okay, perfect. So what we're going to do is do bridges. So... Also, that thing is, if since my inner thighs are really tight, I have a little bit of a curve in my back. But the only way to ever get rid of the small curve in my back is if I loosen up my inner thighs. And I do that every day with yoga. But since it's so tight from getting operated on the most and having the most issues to work on with the inner thighs and a lot of the parts in my leg, I need. I think I might need to go to a massage therapist to loosen it up. But have no fear. So doing this exercise, if you have inner thighs or if you have a small curve, focus on keeping your glutes. Focus on engaging your glutes to keep it tough, to keep it in line so it doesn't hurt you because it's important to have good posture as you do this workout. So we're going to warm up with some bridges. So co concentrate in keeping, your, keeping, keeping that curve in line with your glutes and lift up. So now you feel it. You should feel your hamstrings engaged, your glutes engaged. I'm feeling them right now. You should be feeling them. And then drop low. We're going to do it again. Just a few seconds. Just letting you know, if you're feeling your hamstrings and your glutes, that's fantastic. If your hamstrings are cramping up, then like what I, like what I started experiencing when I started doing this pose, is because your hamstrings are not strong enough to take that, so that's what starts cramping up. But as you keep doing them, you'll start to feel it. So now, this is, I'm not a trainer, so this is not perfect if I'm not holding it up for seconds, like as if I'm training you. I'm just doing, I'm doing my best, but hopefully, 
Hopefully this is good enough. Drop down. And we're gonna do one more and then we're just gonna we're gonna go right into the workout. Okay, so now we did that. We did bridges. Another thing we can also try. Other th another thing you can also try is try. You can even put a, you can put a towel in between, a soccer ball in between, which I will show you right now. We're gonna be using a towel today, <laughs> but actually we can use we can actually use my pillow. So, with the pillow in particular, the pillow will basically engage. Will basically make it a lot more tougher, as well as it, you know, it, it makes it activates your inner thighs that it's time for me, and then you basically. Squeeze that pillow, squeeze that soccer ball, squeeze whatever is in between, and then you feel the challenge between your hip between your inner thighs, your hamstrings and your glutes. Once again, if you have a curve, engage your engage your glutes. Keep your keep your back keep your back straight, so that curve doesn't stay in when you're doing the pose. You could you could you can damage the disc in your back. So you have to always make sure you're engaging that curve, making sure it's straight, and then keep working on um, stretching out the muscles that are causing that curve. If you can hear me. All right, we're gonna drop down. All right. So I showed you the bridge. I showed you what it means to engage it with a pillow, a soccer ball. And also if we had a band here, we don't have a band here today, but um, you can also use a put, a, put a, put a band around your leg and have that be resistant as you do the bridge. So now we warmed up with some bridges. We're not gonna do, we're not actually gonna now push ourselves. And I'm gonna show you some, we're, now, we're gonna do some, we're gonna do side planks and it's gonna be a challenge, but hopefully you guys can keep up. <laughs> Hold on, let me put some music on before we start. Otherwise, I don't, I don't want to, I don't want it to just be my voice. I don't just talk. Okay. Ah, uh, this is commercial. All right. All right. All right, let's get started. Plank. I'm watching the time. Once again, this is just a walkthrough. It's not a full session, but hopefully gives you an idea of how it should be. I know it's a break, so hold on. You can stay with me here. Once we do planks, we're gonna move to a push-up position, then we're gonna rise up. Just follow my lead. Break the plank for a sec. We're gonna do a plank. Then we're gonna move to a downward facing dog. Then we're gonna push down to push-up. And then move back to forearm push-up, forearm plank, and do it that way. Okay? One, two, three. All right, now facing God. Push up. Do two, three. Four, five, six, one more. Downward facing dog, plank. 
We're going to do three more push-ups, then we're going to go into chest pose and do it again. Alright, one more. One, two, three, four, five, child pose. Alright, second set. Then we're gonna do something else. Up. Come on, one foot in front of the other. I know you can feel it. Push yourself. Five push-ups, come on, last round. Child pose. Good. Now we're gonna what we're gonna do now is come up on our side. Side plank. Oh, I'm trying to get you guys to face me. Keep your legs. You can, if you're like me, you keep your legs like this, or you can have one leg on top of the other. Pretend like underneath you is the eggshells. You, you're, this part of your body shouldn't hit the ground. You're trying to avoid cracking the eggshells, and your head should be facing like this to the sky, trying to be airborne. Come on, stay with me. I'll tell you when to hold it, and then we'll switch to the other side. Other side. This is so good for your core. Other side. Uh, stupid ads. So now we did. So now we did this side. We did the other side. All right. Let's finish. All right. We're gonna do two more sides on each side. Then what we're gonna. Then what we're gonna do is move to more core on the ground, lying on your back. Okay. All right, that's right. Once again, if you can't keep your like, ankle one on top of the other, like me, I can do it, but I can also do it like this. That's fine. Alright, so now what we're going to do is do more core on the back. So what we're going to do is, one leg is like this, and the bike is. Alright, so we did biking. The next thing we're gonna do is. Okay. 
The next thing we're gonna do is basically do um We're gonna do toe tap. So now just like I said, toe tap is a bit of a struggle for me at the moment. So anyone that can do toe taps, that's cool. Just try your best. You'll get it with time. So it's basically it's toe tap, toe tap. But if you can do toe tap, just quick. You can feel, use your foot, the bottom of the part of your foot. And it's just similar to biking, but not quite. We're not going all the way. Alright. So, that's toe taps. The next thing we're going to do is, we're going to do another exercise where we have, we have your legs like this. When we do crunch up. Let's see if I can come by the side, it's easier. Come on, crunch. It's so good for you. Crunch your side. Alright, so we're... That's crunches. Now what we're gonna do is do focus on another exercise we known as the crunching up. So your legs are straight like so your legs are straight like so. Where you basically lie on your back and then your legs like this and you engage your core that way. So wait. Like that. This is good for your core. So push this up. For getting on the ads, let's just finish. Alright. Alright. Alright, so. And release. So, that's good for your core. The next thing we're gonna do is, the next exercise good for your core as well, is we're gonna do the Superman, which I'll show you. And of course, the ads are driving me nuts. I apologize. Alright, that's better. <laughs> I said forget about the ads, but I'm not gonna forget. It's annoying. So, Superman is good for your core too. Swing around the ground. Keep it, don't look at me. Look at the ground. You should lift your head, your whole body like this. Your quads, your legs. You should be airborne like this. And you hold. Stay with me, I know when to break. Alright, two more Superman, then I'm gonna show you something else. Alright, two, three, go. Lift your quads as high as you can. Look to the ground. It's like we're flying. Swim it out. Swim it out. Move your arms, move your legs. Do your best to swim it out. Alright. Child pose. Then we're gonna do one last Superman and I'll show you something different. This is a very good pose to do when you're trying to just relax. Breathe a bit. Then just stop. Alright. So after this pose, with um, the Superman pose, I'll show you another core workout where you go, it's the opposite arm, opposite leg lift, okay? Go. Break. Alright, instead of going to chest pose, I'll show you another pose you can do to just chill out. Just hug those knees into the chest. I'll show you. So, this is very good also when you're trying to breathe and hug the knees into the chest. So you go. Hug those knees into your chest. Breathe. Take it in. Alright. 
All right. So I showed you that. I'm going to show you another core workout. And then I'm going to show you one last exercise. So before we continue, let me go get a stretch band. And let me go get a ball. I'll be right back. For the record, this is not a perfect session. I didn't mean it. I want it to be perfect, but I'm just trying to be original as I can. Be right back. Okay, before we continue, this is a soccer ball. You can use, like I said, you can use this or the pillow I showed earlier to add some resistance when you're doing that bridge. Another thing you can try and do is when you do planks, I can show you back here, but before I show you, here's the resistance bands, which I will show you in a moment. But it's to create resistance to make the exercise more tougher and to challenge you a bit. So what we're gonna do next is, now before I show you another exercise I can do, once again, like, I'll show you another core exercise. You keep the ball in between your leg and you lift up, but I can't do that right now because I'm not there. And I think this goes for anyone. It's all about practice, so just practice. So here's the ball, and you know I showed you with the pillow, so I just wanted to give you guys a visual. So here's the band. I know, I promised you guys a core workout where it's opposite arm, opposite leg, but I want to first show you the band first. Very powerful exercise we're gonna show. So give me a minute to put it on. So, like I said, the point is don't be afraid to challenge yourself. So if you don't wanna do the resistance because it's challenging or whatever, that's the point. You gotta push yourself. All right, all right. So once again, this is to create resistance. So we could do this with doing a plank. Doing a plank, and then we could do this through doing side planks because with the resistance. If you don't have a band, it's cool. They're really cheap to get, and it's no big deal, but it just this is just to create more of a challenge. And also really helpful access to do, which takes a lot of practices. You're trying to do squats where you just fall back on your heels and then you just and then you move but it's practice. But anyway, I'm not gonna show you that. I'm not there. So I don't wanna make a fool of myself. So let's let's wrap this up with one last pose I can show you. And then I can show you a few other ones, but I'm not, I realized since I'm not fully there, I was gonna show you like the starfish, the starfish, abac, the starfish exercise, where we come up like a starfish and we move our legs, but I'm not there yet. So I guess I can just show you Oh, I don't know. No music. We're going to just wrap this up real quick. Oops. Alright. So it's opposite arm, opposite leg. Lift your right arm, lift your left leg. Hold for a while. And then break. Hold. Break, break, break. For the record, this is not a full session. I'm just trying to give you guys a walkthrough of what I do for this class assignment, trying to make it look like a real session. So if it's not the real thing and I'm not pushing you hard enough with how many seconds we held it, my bad. I'm just trying to do an assignment and I'm trying to keep it simple. Where, and I've never trained anyone before and I've never done anything like this. So, so it's a bit, it's a bit different to a yoga session or something I've done before. So that's the end of the workout. I showed you all the different poses. So hope, like I said, this is just a tutorial on how I would train on, on for my class assignment. But hopefully, I've inspired all of you. And like I said, Pilates is all about practice. So don't give up. 
show determination. It's all about practice because in the beginning, I didn't even have the stamina to keep up with a lot of the, the sessions. We were, in the beginning, the first session, I was completely dead. I didn't keep up, but now my fitness is so up there and my movement and my coordination is a lot better. So the point is, it's all about practice. So practice makes perfect. Hopefully this little tutorial shows you a little bit about Pilates, hoping, inspiring you to give it a try and Hopefully, you know, I was some help to you with the feedback I've given you and how to show you how to do it and stuff like that. So, um, hope you like this video. Peace.